7 o'clock, which means it's time for TNT. TNT is Tuesday night teaching. And usually at this hour, Dr. Wise is here to share an awesome lesson. But right now, he and Reverend Tobias are in Sierra Leone preaching, teaching, and healing with our partners in our International Fellowship of Faith Ministries. And so we're going to pray for them while they are over there doing mission. And we're going to hold it down right here in Columbus, Ohio. Amen. And so if you know anything about baseball, I think, or what I'm going to say, Dr. Wise has called in some pinch hitters. And if you don't know about baseball, a pinch hitter, that's a player that bats in place for their teammate. So last Tuesday, Dr. Wise called in Reverend Cass, and she did an awesome job teaching TNT, and she raised the question, what are we supposed to do now? And then just a few days ago, Reverend Sherry Chafin, she had us stretching, and then she stretched our mind because she asked us, what's getting on your nerves? And she talked about some nerves. So if you did not see either one of these awesome women of God, I challenge you to please go back. It's still on our YouTube page. It's also on our Facebook page and watch both of those messages. You will truly be blessed. And speaking of blessed, we are blessed to have the availability of so many awesome ministers in this church. Say amen. 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 So even while Dr. Wise is gone, the word still goes forth. And as a matter of fact, right now, speaking of going forth, this is an awesome time if you haven't done so. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and like our page. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. This way, each and every time we go live, you will get a notification and you won't miss out on any service that Faith Ministry stream, whether it's on YouTube or on Facebook. And if you're on our church website, just click the play button and you'll be good to go. So in that motion, I want to also give Dr. Wise and sister and Dr. Shirley Wise a huge thanks for this opportunity. We don't take this for granted. We're always excited to bring the word, but we're also excited for the opportunity. And of course, of course, did I say of course? Of course, my wonderful, lovely, and beautiful wife, Ave. She's quiet, but she is amazing. Say amen. And then we have two young men. We have Taiwan, who is about to graduate from the University of Cincinnati. We are so blessed and excited about that. Then we have Big Mike, call this up DJ Skip, as he announced in the lobby. He is in Midway, Kentucky, doing amazing in college also. The Lord is faithful, y'all. He is faithful. And then to my media family, Lord know that I am thankful for you guys for always showing up and showing out each and every Sunday and on Tuesdays, even to help this ministry and this broadcast go forth. And then our faith family, we're talking about you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for showing up. And right now, go ahead and put something in the comment section to let us know that you're online watching with us and thank all of you for your support. And with all that being said, like I mentioned, it's Tuesday night, it's seven o'clock. Let's get into teaching. We know that during uncertainty and childhood trauma, some of us had tough, uh, hard high school and middle school years, bad relationships, unfulfilling marriages. All of these things can do a number on our mental health and our sense of security. Even though being safe in the knowledge that God is always looking out for us, sometimes we fear, we allow fear, which comes alone, and then fear will install doubt. And then doubt will have us uh, questioning our safety. Fun fact about me, a lot of you have talked to me or been around to me, because you've been around me, you know I love to talk. But I don't always share this. I mean, if you know, you know. But for the last 24, almost 25 years, I have installed security systems alarm systems, camera systems, fire detection systems, car alarms, access control systems, all to just help people feel safe. We even did a job for the Columbus Zoo protecting the animals. But funny thing, just last Thursday, just last Thursday, Ave and I woke up on a uh, Friday morning and I walked out into the hallway and the alarm didn't go off. And I said, oh, Ave, you've already been up front? Nope, we just forgot to turn the alarm on. There's our sense of security. But it's important, in fact, it's mandatory that during these trying times that we remember to reflect on the promises of God. And so what that means is you can't lean only on your alarm system. You can't count on that ring camera or even your big guard dog. 
So what we're going to do tonight, we're just going to go through some verses, go through a remind us. I'm going to do a review of a couple stories in the Bible that describes how God protects his people and then how we can learn how God will protect us. Amen. And then if you're worried about whether or not God is there enough for you during these during your trying times of danger and uncertainty, you have joined in on the right night. But before we go any further, let's bow for a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you're going to do. Lord, we just ask that you be with us as we bring this message for this TNT, Lord. And we ask that you allow the words of my mouth and even the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. And all the people of the Lord say, Amen. Safety. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Safety. So what is safety? The dictionary says it's a condition of being protected from or unlikely to cause danger, risk or injury or the state of being safe or freedom from the occurrence of risk or injury, danger or a loss. So now we just want to spend a few minutes going through a few verses and that will and these things should hopefully when we get done remind us that safety. It's in there. Somebody say safety. It's in there. So sometimes in life, especially during periods of fear and anxiety, such as having a, a unsafe workplace or we have to travel and it's unfamiliar. It feels like that. It feels like God is not always with us as he should be. Sometimes we wonder if God wants the best for us, then why does he put us in these situations that make us uneasy? makes us feel unsafe in the first place. But also what I've learned is it's easy to forget that it's these situations that are not just unjust, but they end up, uh, it's, a, it's a design, excuse me, that will allow us to enhance our relationship. And then these situations end up bringing us closer to God. And then here additionally, inside the Bible study tonight and inside the Bible, we're going to see a few examples of how God has protected his children. God is omnipotent, which means he has unlimited and universal power. He has a plan for each of us, y'all. And, and it's, it's hard, even though we try, we, we, we can't understand his intentions all the time. So it's important that we follow his word, trust his protection, and then live according to his will as it's expressed in the Bible. So let's go through a couple of scriptures just to see what I'm talking about. So tonight, we're going to start at Psalms 18. Uh, verses two and verse three, Psalm 18, two and three. And it reads, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. So here we are in just this very first verse, and it tells us a few things about how the Lord will keep us safe. First, it mentions a rock. What's a rock? A rock is a hard mineral, which is also solid. So in other words, this means that God will always do what he says he's going to do. We, we can stop right there. He is the rock and he will do exactly what he says he will do. And then I looked it up in Strong's and it said that it also means to be lofty. And lofty means to be high, actively to rise or to raise. So think about that, y'all. So the Lord is our rock, which means he's solid for us. But while he's being solid for us to stand on, he's also raising us up. Oh, I'm, I'm teaching, teaching. I, I, I'm teaching, teaching. So he's solid, all right, for us to stand on. But then while we're standing on him, he is continuing to elevate us. That's a rock. So, so have you ever been in a situation where you were lower than four flat tires? I mean, so low. You, you know that game they call limbo where they move that bar and you're supposed to go under the bar lower and lower. I mean, the low, the limbo bar was so low that you couldn't squeeze under. That's how low you were. It was touching the ground. But then in your pity party, in your mess, you hear a word from God or, or your favorite Bible verse that you used to quote. And then it gives you a pick me up 
and you can you can you can wipe your eyes and you can get out the bed. And then that's the, that's what it means for him to be that rock for you to stand on and provide that safety net. And it says the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. So that's what I'm saying about being able to stand on him. And then he raises you up because he will deliver you out of any situation. Then it goes on to say, my God, my strength in whom I will trust. And then I will call upon the Lord because he is worthy to be praised. And then it finishes and says, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Safety. <laughs> it's in there. And, and see, now here we are in 2024 and everybody's walking around. I'm standing on business. You better stand on the rock. You better stand on the rock. The one that's, un that's unmovable, unshakable. Stand on the rock. Let's keep moving. Next, we're going to look at Isaiah 41, verse 10. Isaiah 41, verse 10. And it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Is, is that in your Bible? Am I making that up? I mean, we can shout and go home right now. Well, you already home, but you can go ahead and shout. Go ahead and do that, Reverend Frank Lane, and go ahead and get you a run in. Because this verse lets you know that God is also omnipresent, which means he's everywhere. Somebody say everywhere. And so this says, do not be dismayed, which means don't worry. Be happy. Because there's times in your life when, when, when it feels like the walls are closing in and it's like, what do I do? What did the verse just tell you? I am your God. Your, your ends, not, they're not even not, they're not, not meeting. They're not even talking to each other. They're like distant cousins. What does this verse say? I am your God. You don't know what's next in life. If you should quit that job and start a business, if you should start a ministry, what does it say? Be not dismayed. I am your God. Some of us, you may have just lost a loved one and the timing seems all off. God doesn't make a mistake. Because what did he say in this verse? I am your God. Be not dismayed. Don't worry or be concerned. Because I am your God and what? I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And, and, and I was looking at this, and, and it's amazing. The right hand of God, it's a special place. You don't believe me? Look at, look at this verse. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Romans 8, 34. And it says, Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen who is even where at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. So this tells us that through all of our mess, through all of that doubt and all of that worry, God is still what? Our rock. He's still what? Our strength. And then he is still pleading for us at the right hand of God, the father. It says he will uphold us with his righteous right hand. And I don't know about you, but that feels good to me because that makes me feel safe in his arms. And, and, and let's go on to the next. We're going to keep going. We, we got a couple to get through tonight. So the next one is Psalms 121, 5 through 8. Psalms 121, 5 through 8. And it reads, The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade. At your right hand. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, time out. Flag on the play. Did y'all hear that? We, we call that a bar. <laughs> that means he just said something. The writer just said, the Lord is your shade. Do you know what shade is? Shade is your shadow. What What's that? Oh, I, I hear you, Mother Welch. <laughs> Y'all know who Mother Welch is, right? Sister Sheila Welch, Golden Girls, leader of all things, praise and worship. Yeah, see, see, Mother Welch, she's a great, a great, awesome encourager. And I can hear her saying, go on, Reverend Thomas, go on and preach that word. But, but, and so I'm going to go on, even though this is Bible study, but I'm going to go ahead and keep teaching. And, and see, what happens is 
the, the shadow that we're talking about, a shadow will always be formed behind you. Why? Because the sun, the S-U-N, comes from the front of you and it omits light that causes a shadow behind you. But I can also imagine that the sun, the S-U-N, is shining a light on front of you to create the shadow. But guess what? The sun, the S-O-N, <laughs> he's in the shadow because he has your back. Because he is the rock for you to stand on. I better keep going for I turn this into a preacher session. I'm excited, y'all. I am so excited. So let's let's keep reading. Uh, verse number six. It says, "The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by light, by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in, from this time forth and even forevermore." Let that sink in for a moment, just a moment. The sun nor the moon. So this means all the time. Somebody say all the time. And then it continues to go on because that either we're either going to have the sun or we're going to have the moon. Or like last week with the eclipse, we got them both. But then it continues on and says, it says that your soul will continue to be preserved, coming and going. So that's like the candy back in the 80s and the 90s, now and later. So even though in the times when you feel alone, you were preserved. Even when the sun was out and it felt like nighttime, you were preserved. And then looking forward into your future, which you don't know what may be coming your way. Yep, still preserved. What a mighty God we serve. And then you remember David, don't you? You know. David, you know, David from the east side, the one with the with the smooth stones and the slingshot. David was faced with what seemed to be an impossible task, and that was to defeat a giant. But David was steadfast and he believed that God would protect him as he did before. They had a relationship. So this was something that you can stand on and know that if he did it before, he can do it again. And then David said this in 1 Samuel 17 and 45. Then David said to the Philistines, you come to me with a sword, a sword, with a spear and with the javelin. This brother bought everything. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, who you have defiled. Just imagine just imagine how different our lives, our situations, and our relationships, our relationships would be if every time, not, not sometimes, but every time we were about to fight, we didn't start cussing. Oh, I'm, I must be the only one. Oh, it's all good. Or we didn't start fussing. Am I coming on your street yet? Or we didn't threaten violence or threaten to leave. But if you came up to your enemy or the person you were in a disagreement with and said, I come in the name of the Lord and stood on that, woo, I dare you to try that. I was, I was, I was going through this and, and writing this, this, this Bible study, and I was like, if I was arguing and someone said, Thomas, I come to, I come to you in the name of the Lord, oh, I'm, I'm just going to, that would stop me dead in my tracks. You know why? Because at that name, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. That's a mic drop. It's over. I, we, we done. You can't help but say sorry or acknowledge that your person is not fighting alone and that they have already won the victory. Try that. Instead of fussing, instead of arguing, instead of fighting, Instead of running away, look that situation dead in the face and say, I come in the name of the Lord. I guarantee it's going to be a game changer. I promise you. Next, we have Exodus 14 and 14. And then it says, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. There's safety in there. Then another brother, you remember Moses, right? You don't remember Moses? 
Another story where a child of God was uh, given a task or a situation that seemed to be impossible to win. And it also threatened his safety and then the people that Moses was going to go to go and get involved with. Moses was to go to the king of Egypt named Pharaoh and tell them, hey, man, you got to let them people go and they're going to come with me. And then he was going to take them across the Red Sea. And I was thinking, like, if I was Moses, I'm just going to be like, you know what? OK, God, if I got to die, it's my time to go. Because first, when I go up to the king, if he don't kill me, I'm probably going to drown in the Red Sea. But here's what's so great about the God that we serve is that he also gave Moses some instructions like the head. Here go. He said in Exodus 8, 1. And it reads. And the Lord spoke to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. Let my people go that they may serve me. And he didn't stop there. God is not playing. He then told him that, you know what? He sent a command with, and then he, he promised, he sent a promise along with this command to Pharaoh. He said that if you do not comply, a plague of frogs will come over your land. And that's going to be so destructive. So, so the Lord take his safety <laughs> and he can he give his safety and he can take it away. So we have to know that as a part of this walk with Christ, we must trust, we must love, we must obey and walk inside the will of God. So you have to ask yourself, during these times when I feel alone, I feel unsafe, is it because I'm operating outside the will of God? If not, then you have to explore some other options. But if it is, I have a solution for you. Guess what? It's in your Bible. And it's found in Romans 12, 2. And it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. See, we've all been there where we've been afraid, we've been confused, we've been scared, but that's when you must lean, lay, stand, whatever you can do on Christ, the solid rock. We talked about that earlier. You must stand on Christ. Amen. Amen. Moving right along. Our next verse can be found in second Thessalonians chapter three, verses one through five, second Thessalonians three, one through five. And it reads, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you. And that way, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Talking about safety again. For not all have faith. But the Lord, who? But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you will do and will do the things we command. Now may God direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. Here we are again. In verse three, we find the word guard. It says guard you from the evil one. And guard means to watch, to keep, to keep watch, to have an eye upon, to ensure that something doesn't perish. My God, now that's safety. So feeling safety in the Lord stems from the assurances of his unconditional love, which surpasses our understanding and it remains constant regardless of our circumstance. It doesn't matter what we're tied up in, what we're caught up in. God remains the same. And as believers, we find safety in the Lord's promise of divine protection, knowing that he watches over us and he shields us from harm which then allows us to have the peace 
even if everything else around us is uncertain. So what we must do is trust in the Lord because it will bring us a sense of peace as his presence brings stabilization in the forest amidst of all of the turmoil. It doesn't matter if you're having a hard time on your job, having a hard time in class, having a hard time in your church. He will bring stability in that situation because being safe in the Lord allows us to find strength and our weakness, knowing that his power is made perfect in our moments of vulnerability. That's a bar. We can find strength in him. And then through faith, believers trust in the Lord's guidance and direction, following safely, I mean, finding safety and following his path, even when it seems unclear. You have to be able to say, you know what, Lord, I don't know where we're going, but I'm going to go. You get in your car every day and you turn on your, your Waze app or your Siri app or your Maps app, and you don't know those people. You don't know that they know where you're going. You type an address and you just go. We have to have that same attitude when it's time to follow Christ, even when it seems unclear. This will then give us the freedom from fear. Trusting in the Lord will free us and release us from fear, from worry, from anxiety, when we put all of our concerns in his capable hands. Then as believers find ultimate safety in the Lord's promise of eternal life, that's what we're trying to get to. We're trying to get to him. <laughs> that's what the old people say. We're trying to get to him. And how to do that, we have to stand on his promises and then know that nothing, somebody say nothing, nothing can separate us from his love and the salvation that he offers. Feeling safe in the Lord also can bring you comfort during uh, times of trials and hardships. And then as believers, we have to know that his present presence will sustain us through all difficulties. All difficulties. Not having a job, all difficulties. Not knowing up from down, all difficulties. Trouble does not last always when you are safe in the arms of the Lord. And trusting in the Lord renews your hope. Even when you feel like everything is broken down, as believers, we can find comfort in his promise that the future is going to be better. And then believers also find that safety in the Lord also not in, is not just for individuals. It's also great with, when we are with the community of believers. That's where we can find support, encouragement, and our faith journey. And if you're not a part of it, this is why our faith family is so important. This is why I love the AC groups. I love the small groups ministry. That's where you can get and you can share some experiences, some testimonies, some praise reports, and you can be encouraged. So make sure you stay in touch and in fellowship with like-minded people. And the great thing about this is that the will of the, if with the will of the Lord, you can start easy. You can start easy. I'm sorry, you can start early. There's one of my favorite songs of all time. Sister, Sister Cynthia Goins wrote a song, and I share this often because the power behind it. I want to share a short clip of this song featuring uh, Reverend Sherry Chafin. She did give me permission to share this clip. Check this out. God hears me when I pray. God hears me when I pray out of all the people in this great big world, God hears me. He knows my voice. And he hears me when I pray. God hears me when I pray. That's powerful, y'all. What I say, you can start this early, even as a child. It is so simple, but yet so powerful. Because it reminds us that we can ask anything anything in God's name because he hears us when we pray. Looking at where we are today, I often wonder 
How different could it be if we called on the name of the Lord more often and if we all felt safe? We often hear that hurt people hurt people. Let's break this curse and be a community of people that feel safe in the arms of the Lord and then begin to create other safe spaces for other people so that they will feel safe. It's safety in there, y'all. I'm talking about the Bible. I'm talking about in the will of God. There's safety in there. And this is why Bible study is so important. Every question that you have, all dear, all, <laughs> all dear, not dears, all doubt, all fears, they can all be addressed by the Father. So if you have not now, if you have not now, create or increase your prayer life. Find a good study Bible. And if you're like me, find a good study Bible that has it on audio. I prefer to listen. I'm just, I'm just one of those guys. And then once you find a good Bible, get a great concordance. It is amazing to have a concordance to go when you're studying. And then also get a good reference like Strong's. It has changed my study habits and my understanding of the Bible in some words when I'm studying the Lord's Word. So get all of those if you want to increase your Bible study habits. So, we're getting ready to wind this thing up, you guys. What can you take away from tonight? Number one, feeling safe in God will give you peace. Number two, you will get this peace from the love, wisdom, and sovereignty over all of your circumstances. Number three, you can rest that God is the same today and forever. Number four, his assurance empowers us to face all challenges, not some, but all challenges with courage, knowing that we are embraced by an ever loving and protective father. And then number five, the title for tonight, safety. It's in there. So thank you for joining us tonight for TNT. I pray that you picked up something along the way that will help you know that there's safety in there. Let the past go. Stop letting it hold you back. Grab a hold and then stand on the rock. Stand on the rock. And as you stand, he will raise you up. So as you know, or if you didn't know, if you wasn't here on Sunday, uh, Dr. Wise will return to these United States, hopefully tomorrow, not hopefully, tomorrow he will be here. I'm going to stand on that. So be sure to join us this Sunday for worship at 10 a.m. I'm sure Dr. Wise will return with a word with a testimony, some pictures, probably even a few videos to share about the trip that him and Reverend Tobias took to Sierra Leone. And uh, it's going to be a great time, y'all. So I know everybody misses Dr. Wise. Like I said, we all do our best to fill in, but there is only one C. Dexter Wise III, and we are looking forward to meeting him here in this place at 10 o'clock. Also, continue recovery to our First Lady, Dr. Shirley D. Wise. So with all that being said, if all minds are clear, let's bow for a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you're going to do. And Lord, we just ask you to dismiss us from this service, Lord. And we just pray that your word did not fall on deaf ears, Lord, that we are able to stand on the rock, Lord, which is Jesus Christ, move and grow and release all hurt, harm, uh, danger, anything in the past that's holding us back, Lord. We ask that we are able to release it so that we can find safety in your arms. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a great week and we'll see you on Sunday, 10 a.m.